Yeah, what? If, if I make a video in America about like a train, yeah, nobody's gonna say Joe Biden paid me <laughs> to talk about a train, right? right? But if I make a video about a train in China, they're like, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Uh, I'm like, a lot of people were just like, China is the next big thing. Like, exactly. you get in a taxi and every taxi driver's like, America's here and China's catching up, right? <laughs> yeah, 12 years ago, so many people had no idea about the reality of China, yeah. but you well, decided I, to break your backs <laughs> and move to China. Yeah, so. I don't know. At some point, somebody told them that China is bad and China, or any, anything, not just China, but anything, like this is bad, this is how, what you should think. In China, you can see that there is a will from the top down, local governments too. Like back in those days, a lot of travel was still done on the green trains, which I don't know if you've ever even been on one. I've been, I've, yeah, I've been on a few of them. <laughs> okay. Welcome to another amazing episode of Willens Interviews here on this channel. Today we are here in the beautiful city of Shenzhen at the OCT Loft. OCT Loft, right? OCT Loft, that's right. And we've got my amazing friend here. Hello. He's also a YouTuber, Eric G. You can go check out his channel. We met at the Guangzhou Auto Show last year and we just bonded immediately so i'm so glad to have him here oh let me not let the cat out of the back let me let him introduce himself <laughs> yeah hey, eric um thank you for having me today uh, my name is eric and i've been in china for like 12 years now a little over 12 years uh, basically my entire adult life when i think about it has been here in china like after college i basically i just came here um so that's me i'm eric my name my channel is eric g and i cover all kinds of things that interest me in china or in general uh, and so I'm really grateful that you have me here today. Whoa, 12 years in yeah. China. 12 years is not 12 days. That's a really long time. So it feels it, like a long time. <laughs> of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a really long time. For a start, why China? Like, you know... That's a question. Yeah, we all know from the US, so many people... Like 12 years ago, so many people had no idea about the reality of China. Yeah. But you well, decided I, to break your backs <laughs> and move to China, so... I, I didn't have any idea about the reality of China either, to be honest with you. Um, 12 years ago, why China? I get that question a lot. And the answer I always tell people is, you know, like, why not? Like, at the time of my life, uh, I was kind of just looking for a job anywhere in the world, ideally. Um, I had been working, in, I, I graduated university, and I went to Australia to work. And I lived in Australia for about a year and a half, two years, and I had to come back because my dad was pretty ill. Um, it's okay. And, and then, so I came back to the States, and I worked, you know, till I was like 26, and I was like, man, I'm just, tired you know I just didn't want to be in America like I felt like it was kind of a dead end for me like I, I didn't know what I wanted to do and I just started looking online for jobs like anywhere in the world and I actually got offered a job in Dominican Republic to, yeah. to be honest with you and I was about to take it and then like it kind of got like revoked or reneged upon or whatever and then the next offer I got was in China in Shanghai and so I was like, all right, I'm gonna hit the road, I'm gonna go to Shanghai. And so that's what I did. So your very first city was Shanghai. Sh yeah, Shanghai. So when you first got to China, to Shanghai, what were your first thoughts? What did you think about, like, when you saw Shanghai, how did you feel? Was it like what you heard before in the media, before moving to China? So the, the very first thought I ever had when I got off the plane in Shanghai was how bright the lights were. Like, this, I, I landed at night. It was yeah. like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, got in the taxi. The elevated roads, the highways are all 12, lit up. Uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even today, like 12 yeah, years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, so my first yeah. impression, like, because like when you're growing up in America, at least in, in my generation, my age, I'm almost 40 and I'm 39. Yeah. And so when I was growing up in school, we learned about like communist revolution, Mao era, exactly. cu cultural revolution, sorry. Um, and we learned about like how, how poor China is. Yeah. Right, how poor China is. That's what the media tells yeah. everyone out of China. Yeah. And so, that was always kind of my impression is China's kind of like a poor back, backwaters country. Yeah. But at the same time, I also knew that like Shanghai was a global city. I know about Hong Kong as a, a global city. And so I kind of had like not really a clear impression, I would say, about what China actually was when yeah. I got here. I just had kind of like images of it being poor, but also being advanced and exactly. like a dichotomy of what it actually is. And then when I got here 12 years ago and I looked around and I was like, just like so, so impressed. My first impression was, like everything's like lit up and it's like such a such a, like a a really stark first impression where you're like like this is not what i expected to see no, right no, <laughs> like, not at all. even though it's like very superficial thing yeah but like you see it and you're like wow this is not not at all what i expected so, that, so what you saw in the media wasn't what you actually saw when you arrived here in china yeah and, and i mean also too you got to think about like 12 years ago the, yeah. the media and like social media was was much different at That's that time true. too yeah so like I think YouTube existed back then, but yeah, I'm not YouTube, sure. I think YouTube was 
like actually existing back then but not as popular as now yeah for sure and yeah, so so like I, you didn't see like firsthand like videos like yours or yeah, other people who are yours. actually here showing people i was kind of like um everything was new to me yeah i didn't know what to expect um so whether it was like the media had taught me or told me i, I don't really know because i feel like i had no real solid understanding of what China was actually like at that time. Well, same with me. Like back in my country in Cameroon, when I was actually growing up, we used to feel like China was poor or China was like this or there was so much hatred or there was no freedom mm -hmm. in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said everything was controlled, the censorship, the com oh, the communist China. Yeah. When I got here, I <laughs> felt something really, really different. Yeah. And uh, I realized that there seems to be more freedom in China yeah. than like you can move around, do yeah. a lot without being scared for your life and stuff. Oh yeah, like when it comes to like personal safety and yeah. that sort of like freedom that you have to be here and do whatever you want as like on an individual level, totally, yeah. it feels totally free. And I agree with you in that, in that regard. Let me get into this topic. Yeah. I know it's a, it's a little bit sensitive, but you can just leave out the parts that you want to leave mm -hmm. out. You know, recently there's the geopolitical tensions between the US and China. Yeah. And there's a lot going on worldwide of course linked to China and linked to the USA. So you living here in China as an American yeah. and traveling around China, have you had any bad experiences from the everyday citizens due to that ideology of the political differences that is actually happening around the world? I would say that over the course of 12 years in China, the vast majority of my experiences have been all very good in interactions, the vast majority. Yeah. But of course there's bad people, of crappy course. people everywhere it's, you go. Exactly. I can remember specifically, like, it, it stands out to me in my mind because how, like, it doesn't ever happen. So when one time it did happen, where somebody, like, really was like, F you, like, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like scold me, or say you're, you know, American, yeah, go yeah, home, American, all this go stuff. Home, American, yeah. Right, like the one time that happened in 12 years, like, I remember it very clearly. I was at a grocery store, like a Carrefour right the french grocery store yeah. supermarket and some some teenager probably like maybe 19 20 years old young mm. guy he was like heard me talking and was like go home american all this stuff Whoa. and i'm like okay that's really weird because this never happens to me in china right like really most really, of the really, people are really 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 kind here yeah. and welcoming here so i would say with rising geopolitical tensions with america and china it's, it's always it has tension yeah always tension. Um, yeah so i haven't noticed anything different or or new about it uh, people who are still very kind and welcoming all right yeah because what, I, what about you like do people even know what cameroon is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well when i just say i'm from cameroon most of the chinese people that i've spoken to they don't know where exactly cameroon is so sometimes i try to explain to them the location mm -hmm. where cameroon is because actually between west africa and central africa so it's got it's like in between and they speak english and french of mm -hmm. course but uh, when it comes to my personal experiences moving around China, because I've tried my best to travel a lot mm. across provinces here in China, I haven't really had some bad experience. Of course, sometimes you find those kind of people who like say, oh, you're a black man or go back to your country mm. or go back to Africa and stuff like that. I think that's just about maybe two to three percent of yeah. the people that I've met so far during my six years here. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm not black, um, yeah. but, so I don't know what the percentage is, but I, I, like I said, I can think of one one real experience yeah, yeah, where it yeah. like stood out to me but if it's two or three percent that's a lot higher than my experience of course of course um, <laughs> but, but yeah i i mean how have you traveled elsewhere besides china and how's that compare during my own few travels that i've made so far meeting different people from different cultures that i've met people have really been friendly you know i think they're actually good people in the world yeah, yeah. And of course, there are still bad people and people who see the world differently because I believe we're all raised differently. Most of my time that I've lived out of my country, I spent that time here in China. Mm -hmm. So living here in China, all my experiences, most of my experiences, I can say, has been really yeah. amazing. And I've had experiences where someone might try to say something not so good to me. But when I talk with that person after a little while and I try to educate that person, one time there was a kid in one of my videos, one, uh, there was a kid who asked me why I'm black. I just felt like she was genuinely curious. She mm -hmm. just wanted to know about the difference. And where was it? Was this in, in Guangdong? Or yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was here in Shenzhen. Okay. Yeah. She was with her parents. And I think she was genuinely curious. So I just told her, like, we all got different colors, but we are still the same. Yeah. The color is the only difference which makes the world fun, of course. Because yeah. yeah. imagine. We only They're have the one We're all the same, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I just told her that and she understood and she was happy. She gave me high fives yeah. and 
So I think that's my experience that I've really had here in China. And so actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, I've traveled a lot, like yeah. uh, many many countries, and I would say like the place that's like, the least welcoming, the least friendly to strangers is America, like my home country. <laughs> oh. And I don't know if it's just because like I'm I can be more critical of my own country yeah. uh, because it is my my own home, yeah. right? Or if it's truly what happens. But I can think of many many examples where people in public, strangers. Are rude, right? Yeah, of course. And like, of course, of course. Like you said, people are the same everywhere. But like in China, for sure, it's quite different. Where people aren't gonna be like, like attack you for no reason exactly. because of your skin color, because you're a foreigner, or whatever it is. Like, they might say something. They might, they might be curious, but it's never really, from my experience, been like out of like anger or hatred because you're different. Exactly. Um, but we definitely have that problem in America. Yeah, you know, like for me, some of the best friends I've made, like I've had really good friends who've really helped me here in China. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I first got to China, I had some really difficult situations adapting to the culture, mm -hmm. adapting to the environment. But the fact that I found some really good Chinese friends mm -hmm. who helped me incorporate my culture with theirs mm -hmm. because they wanted to know about my own culture and we actually spoke a lot and we used to spend a lot of time together they helped me understand and i think that was the basis or the foundation of me trying to learn some mm. basic chinese language understanding the culture because i think you know moving to a new location far away should definitely be like trying to adapt to that culture it's not just about the language yeah, right yeah. learning the culture and the language you opened a restaurant in Yunnan <laughs> yeah, a yeah. couple of years back yeah that's true so how does it feel as an American opening a business in China, how difficult is it and uh, how was the experience? So my experience, I would say, was overall pretty positive. Um, it was it was interesting time because I opened, I started opening my restaurant in Yunnan in far west China um, about uh, maybe June, July 2019. So that's when I started the process, like looking for a shop, yeah. uh, starting to plan everything. And by the time I opened, it wasn't really difficult to open. Like, you have the local um, government, they can help you with all the paperwork oh. and stuff. Didn't have to hire, like, an agent or So it's much like easier to open a business here as an American or as a, as a foreigner? I, I found it to be relatively straightforward. Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. easy because, like, there's a lot of paperwork. A lot of, of times you got to go get stamps and yeah. chops and things like that. Um, but, like, the local, the local government in Sichuan Bano, they were very, they were very helpful. Um, they have, like, you know, like the civic office and they have people who are in charge yeah. of of commerce or retail or whatever and they help you apply for everything and fill out the paperwork um, so that was all it was all pretty straightforward it a lot a lot of time uh, but not too bad but then i opened it in 2019 december like december 20th i opened um, 2019 so less than a month later we had the pandemic um, so you know like yeah, I, I, I ran the business for a year during the pandemic, which meant uh, a lot of times it was closed. A lot of times I couldn't have dine-in. I was doing uh, delivery only. It must have been tough. Uh, it was tough, yeah. But like I learned a lot and I had a good experience overall, I would say. And I didn't lose that much money because thankfully I did open in yeah. like a, a relatively cheap part of China. Yeah. And I didn't spend a lot of money to, to do it. Um, but I would say the experience was, was pretty good, yeah. Like I think... It was cool because I was selling like hamburgers and pizza, you know, like traditional course, like American course, food, right? Definitely. And in that city at that time, there wasn't really that much. They had a pizza hut and K KFC and yeah. McDonald's, but they don't have like local or, or I guess like uh, authentic yeah. American yeah. selling American food, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was doing like... So you brought that in, you yeah, brought, brought that, that American vibe too. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of people were very, very interested to come see me, come see me cooking. Like I was making, you know... <laughs> Homemade crust, homemade buns, you know, everything everything from scratch. And people in, in that part of the of China had never really had that before in terms exactly. of like a, a real hamburger made from scratch where they're used to like what they get is from KFC yeah, or McDonald's. Yeah, Yunnan right? we're talking about, yeah, yeah. so Yunnan is pretty... So, and they, they were very receptive to me. A lot of people came and I had a lot of customers that were um, repeat customers. They come yeah. all the time, come with their family, come get a pizza, come get hamburgers. Um, but in the, in the end, like, with so much uncertainty with the pandemic, uh, at the end of 2020, I just closed it because I wasn't sure how long it was going to last. And to be honest, probably a good idea because it went until tw end of 2022, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah that was a tough time to own a business yeah. anywhere in the world. I think. Yeah, very bad timing, but it was cool. In the end, it was fine. I, I, I enjoyed my time. I think that was a good learning experience, and of course, I think. There's no risk in learning. Anything you do, even if you feel you have learned something and when you're starting again, obviously you're starting from experience mm -hmm. at that time. So I think that was much more better. Actually, you know, since we're here talking on, on about YouTube a little bit, probably mm -hmm. in this conversation is, 
when I when I had my restaurant and there was no customers because of the pandemic, right? Yeah. That's kind of when I started my channel again because oh, I had wow. originally started like doing a little bit of travel, like not really, just for fun. Yeah. And then because uh, I had nothing to do, I had no customers. Oh. There was a pandemic going on. I was just sitting there in you my so much in my time. restaurant. Yeah, I'm like, I need to talk about like about the the restaurant yeah. because I have nothing else to do. And so I started making videos again. Like oh, nice. I was like doing updates on like sales numbers for my like what the, what the best sellers are like. Yeah. What, what kind of things people are buying here um, with regards to like Western food from, from my restaurant. Um, so it was cool, it got me back into YouTube So and, that, and now I'm doing YouTube, right? Whoa, so, so now that you mentioned YouTube, <laughs> that's a very huge sector here in China recently for many foreigners. Yeah. There are so many foreigners who currently live in China making YouTube videos and there are other foreigners who come from out of China to Shanghai, yeah, Shenzhen, yeah. Beijing, they go around, make videos and show the experience in china to the world show their real experiences here in china to the world now you as an og yeah. youtuber <laughs> yeah. here in china and someone who has been making videos for more than seven years right yeah probably yeah more than seven years so as an american who has probably made hundreds of videos here probably, in china yeah. about china do you sometimes get negative comments or to say negative things to you in the comments like people yeah. out of china do they say uh, negative things to you like why do you support china or stuff like that yeah um so I would say probably like my biggest, I guess like disappointment or thing that I, I don't like about making YouTube content about China or yeah. within China is the, the feedback you get. Yeah. Because actually it's not just the, the negative feedback from people who like don't understand China or hate China for whatever silly reason exactly. that they might have. But also like on the other side of the coin too, you have people who are like ultra nationalist, ultra proud, which is cool. Like I don't mind it, but like. There's no level of like discussion, reasonable discussion. It's either like 100% gung ho, I hate China, or 100% gung ho, I love China. Yeah. And I'm like, can I just like make content in China and not have <laughs> not have it about it. either of that? Because like, exactly. a, a lot of a lot of my content, especially like you, your viewers might not know, is not really about China. It's just like me living a life yeah. in China, right? It's not like about the politics. Exactly. It's not about. The, it's just it's just life. It's just, just people. Yeah. It's normal. And so like, I don't know why people have to say like you're a shill. Or you, you're paid by the yeah, like, CCP, or you're paid by the Chinese. I'm like, yeah, it's just I'm just riding around on a scooter, man. <laughs> you know? You're what, just driving you. Know, you're just riding what, around, yeah, experiencing yeah. China. What are they paying me to do this for? Like, this is just normal life. Exactly. What, what, are, what are they getting out of it? Nothing. And I'm not getting paid. I assure you. If I was, I'd be making a lot more videos, and I'd be wearing nicer clothes. So. <laughs> I get the same comments yeah, yeah. in many of my videos, even videos where I just go around and buy some food and just <laughs> have fun with the locals. Yeah. People come to the comments and they say, oh, you are paid to, to talk about the good part of yeah. China. But one thing I always ask is this, when people go to other countries and they make videos of their lives in other countries, of their travels in other countries, why do people not say, oh, you are paid by yeah. the United States government, right, or right. you are paid by the European government, or you are paid by the African government? Yeah, if, if I make a video in America about like a train, yeah, nobody's gonna say, Joe Biden paid me <laughs> to talk about a train, right? right? But if I make a video about a train in China, they're like, Xi Jinping, I'm like, come on, like, it's ridiculous. So, of course, I can say that most of these people who comment, who actually leave these comments, maybe they haven't really done a lot of research about the world in general, because maybe not just China, yeah. they need to open their minds more. So, for you, as someone who has really traveled around the world through many countries, what's your personal advice to people who actually leave those types of comments? My advice is is don't um, don't leave those comments. But no, for real, um, I would say that. Let me let me think about how to how to phrase this yeah. because I want to say it yeah, of course, in the right way. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, because I, I think it's really important. I, I would just say to say to people that like, be curious, right? Be curious because a lot of people they seem very incurious. They they were told maybe at some point in their life, or maybe by some YouTuber yesterday. I don't know. At some point, somebody told them that China is bad and China or any, anything, not just China, but anything. Like, this is bad, this is how, what you should think. And then even when they're presented with other information, whether, you know, if, if the information challenges what they already think, instead of being like, oh, why do I think this way? And why is it maybe wrong? Instead of like being curious about it, exactly. they're just like, no, this is, this is this, I was told this way and this is how I think, and I'm gonna go on the internet and be mad about it. And I'm like, what kind of life do you live? Exactly. Right? It's, it's insane. They don't want to have open minds. Yeah. Exactly. To keep open minds, mm. to do more research. Because for me personally, right, traveling from Africa mm. and moving to other places and experiencing like China as I've seen, 
I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And moving around and learning has actually helped me grow even more yeah. internally in my mind. The way I see the world now, it's much more different than the way I saw the world like six years back. Mm -hmm. Because right now, my mind is more open. It doesn't matter where I go to in the world right now, I feel like I can actually adapt yeah. and just learn the culture and just be happy. Yeah. Because how long have we got in the world? So. I, you only live once, right? That's what they say. So yeah. you got you to make the best of it and not be negative about exactly. like, everything. I was checking your channel and I saw that you actually did a travel. Yeah. Uh, China travel like seven years back. Yeah, yeah. On you the Sanlun Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, made yeah. a tour around China. Yeah. That was really amazing. How was that experience? Do you mind sharing <laughs> yeah. like how you felt during that time and like moving around China at that time, like seven years back? Of course, it's a really it's huge. It's changed a lot. Yeah. A lot. So, so uh, yeah, when I actually started my channel, my idea was to travel around China. But I bought like a tuk tuk, like a Chinese, yeah, like a Chinese yeah, style tuk tuk, tuk, -tuk yeah, like yeah, in Thailand tuk -tuk, they have, yeah. but the Chinese style one, like a, in China it's like a Lao Rencha, like yeah, an old person car, yeah, Lao Rencha. Um, three wheels, it's kind of like a, got a glass box around it, yeah. like, um, so my idea was buy that and just drive around China. And it was a very bad idea, I gotta be honest with you. So, um, I think it's not that fast, I think. No, not fast, not fast, yeah. not fast at all, but, um, so I bought it in Beijing, yeah. and I just hit the road, right? Me and my friend would hit the road, and after like a day, it was it was summer. It was forty degrees Celsius. We were just melting hot. But but also this this bike is not meant to like go up mountains, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Beijing is kind of like in a bowl, and then there's mountains around it. Uh -huh. So we went to like the Great Wall of China on this little thing, Whoa. and then we went up past it, and it just overheated. The radiator exploded. So I think we drove it. You know, it's been seven years, like you said. I think seven we years. That's I think we drove it for like. Three days, maybe five days, but it basically blew apart. Like it's not, it wasn't built to be be going on that kind of journey. Um, but yeah, we, we ended up just getting rid of it and continued traveling. We traveled around China for like two months, um, and it was very very different. Like people always talk online about how there's like high speed rail and stuff right now, yeah. right? So like back in those days, a lot of travel was still done on the green trains, which I don't know if you've ever even been on one. I've been, I've, yeah, I've been on a few of them. <laughs> okay, I've been on a few yeah. of them. So yeah. like it used to be, there's only a few high speed high speed trains, and everything else is a green train, and like. You got farmers with chickens on the train yeah. and giant piles of sunflower seeds everywhere. And <laughs> so it was a wildly different time in China. Um, and also it was a lot of bus travel. There still is bus travel too, yeah. but now that everything is high speed rail and airports and like everything's been so, so exactly. advanced so quickly, yeah, it's, so easy it's changed a lot. It's changed a great deal. But we, yeah, we went traveled all across China. We went to, um, from Beijing all the way to Xinjiang. And, oh, uh, you've been to Xinjiang also? Yeah, yeah, seven years ago. Seven years ago? <laughs> yeah. Back then, yeah. if you don't mind me asking yeah. Stacey, bro, the, uh, the Xinjiang topic, you know, I was in Xinjiang <laughs> recently, yeah. and so when you went to Xinjiang seven years ago, yeah, uh, how was the experience? So back then, back then, Xinjiang wasn't controversial, really. Yeah. Like, they didn't have the all the stories about whatever's yeah. happening in Xinjiang. But at the time, from my experience, Xinjiang had a lot of, like, security checkpoints and exactly. police everywhere. Um, so it's not, it's not the same as the rest of China. Yeah. Um, but it... You know, I really loved my time in Xinjiang. It was great. Like, people were so friendly. Yeah, exactly. Everybody was welcoming. Everywhere we went, like, nobody cared about, like, my cameras. Like, uh, you watch, chan like, like Vice or whatever channels. Yeah. Like, people are, like, people are following you. Exactly. And I don't know if that happens or not. But I experienced that, too, in Xinjiang. Did people follow you? Or? No, no, right? No, no, no not yeah. for me. I mean, like, uh, I had many people yeah. who want to take pictures with yeah. me, actually. We had a lot of dance and yeah. a lot so of like, fun so stuff. So you've, you've gone recently where it's like, they say like, oh, if you travel there, you gotta be careful. People are gonna come and follow you and check your camera, check your oh, videos. Oh, you mean like uh, some- Like the spies or, yeah. Oh, no, I had no experience right. like that. Yeah, and so in my experience too, like I, I had no, no experience like that either, but I went before all the, all this stuff happened. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know, my, my experience was great. Like I remember drinking like uh, horse milk or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty stuff. Yeah. Um, going to the mountains and talking to a lot of people and nah, Xinjiang is a great yeah, place. Was, I had was, so much fun there too. And I went to the Kazakhs location and I went horse riding. Yeah, so much awesome, fun. Right? So much fun. You know, I I, I went there, but I, I never put up a video from there. Oh, so I still have the raw footage. I just uh, a lot yeah. of my videos from from seven years ago. I made like three episodes. I don't yeah. know. You went back that far. It's amazing. But um, <laughs> yeah. I made like three episodes, and I just I just stopped for whatever reason. Like, wow. but I still have tons of content that I, I could. I'm, Pulled up, I could put up Xinjiang from seven years ago and show people what it was like. So I'm so glad you had that experience yeah. just like myself. And of course, guys, you guys can hear from him. He also went to Xinjiang just yeah. like myself. And he had an amazing experience just like myself, of course. And so you've been here in China for 12 years, right? 12 years is a really long time. Yep. 
and moving around China, you must have seen a whole lot of change within this <laughs> yeah. like 12 years and the speed at which China has evolved mm -hmm. from 12 years ago right up until now. In your own point of view, from your own personal observations, what do you think has been the main drive behind China's swift growth to getting where they are at right now and what can other countries <laughs> learn from this? It's a big question. What can other countries learn? Um, the main driver I think is, is that the whole country just has like a really big incentive to improve like from the government down on down like everybody wants to see China develop and improve like you can hear it you can like especially especially maybe eight nine ten twelve years ago yeah. a lot of people were just like China is the next big thing like exactly. you get in a taxi and every taxi driver is like America is here and China's <laughs> catching up right <laughs> yeah China's and, catching up. and now if I ride a taxi I don't really hear that anymore um, so I don't know if it's if mentally or psychologically it's changed in China but there was a time where everybody was like gung-ho China yeah. go China grow China grow China grow and that was from the top down uh, it was cultural it, it was um, you know everybody's working so hard and, I, and it's probably still like that but I think probably the, also the pandemic maybe kind of kind of just like yeah exactly maybe maybe it slowed Tonight. the momentum a little yeah. bit so it's a little bit different now Whoa. but China has changed so much it's crazy yeah China has really changed just from six years ago when I first got here and I look at it now it's really changed a lot and I think that for example, my country in Africa, Cameroon, for example, I think there's so much we can learn from mm. this because since I think we are still at the level where China was many years ago, so if China has gotten to this level, I really do feel like my country can actually Can, can do, I ask you, is, yeah. is Cameroon part of the Belt and Road project for China? Cameroon actually has lots of uh, contracts with China, the Belt and Road, but okay. they've got a whole lot of stuff going on. Like there are so many things, like so many contracts that have been handled in Cameroon by China are they doing like highways and trains and yeah, things? Yeah, highways, or? highway, not trains yet, but highways and buildings. Do you ever think you can bring your knowledge from China to, back to your of home and, and help Cameroon improve? Of course, yeah. that's my long-term goal. Okay. My long-term goal, of course, as I'm learning right now from China, my long-term goal is to take it back home, try as much as possible because, of course, it's not an easy task. There's so much trouble happening, of course, and uh, there can be some bottlenecks and yeah. uh, difficult situations. But, of course, there are still good situations. So my hope is that if I can get back to my country someday, I can actually share the ideas of what I've seen and mm. learned here in China with my own country, Cameroon, in hopes that we can also be yeah. like China someday. Yeah. Not just Cameroon alone, Cameroon, Nigeria, Central African Republic. I wonder, as a business person here that you are, like if you can work together with like, I don't know if you guys have like a Chamber of Commerce here. I know there's an American Chamber of yeah. Commerce here, but is there a Cameroon Chamber of Commerce where you guys can like develop ideas and then bring them back together? Or how's that work for Cameroon? Well, for us, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Mainly, <laughs> You get that, smaller uh, yeah, than, very yeah. embassy because we are just like 27 million. Yeah. It's just a small country as compared to... The well, that US. means big opportunity for you. <laughs> yeah, of There's course. There's probably not very many Cameroonians here, right? Yeah, so, of course, of yeah. course, of course. But what we do is that we actually link up a lot. Most of us Cameroonians, we link up. Not just Cameroonians, Africans in general. Mm. We do have WeChat groups and community gatherings where we link up and exchange ideas. And if you are trying to do some business and you do not get a lot of information, you can go in those chats and ask mm -hmm. and exchange ideas. I think that's how the growth begins. Because you know, China is big in business, right? Mm -hmm. It's a huge business zone. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people from all over the world coming to China to buy, to sell. And there's a lot of exchanges happening here in China. So just that, because myself, I started business in school. So moving to China has really helped open my mind even more. So if I move back to my country, I plan to be able to share that. Of course, it wouldn't be without difficulties. And you know, the, the political system of many countries in Africa, mm -hmm. because many years ago, my country was colonized by the British and the French. So there's still sort of yeah. some long history happening. Yeah. And yeah, but I hope that someday with everything I've learned and with other Cameroonians who are here in China, they can actually just share ideas and grow not just uh, Cameroonians but the whole of Africa yeah. and not just the whole of Africa but of course other countries that are also struggling to get to a certain point yeah. because I really think that more countries around the world need to work together of course there'll be people who see the world differently and people who want different things but I just think we should be able to exchange positive ideas you have to have like the the political will to to make those changes like you know, uh, exactly. you know, like I wish I knew more about Cameroon. I literally yeah. know almost nothing. <laughs> but like, you know, you have to have people in charge who are not 
so corrupt. You know, exactly. probably every leader everywhere is corrupt. Yeah. I, you know, who knows? But like, not so corrupt, and they have a will to make things better. Exactly. And, you know, I, you can see that in China, you can see that there is a will from the top down. Local governments too. Everywhere you you go, you can see that things want to, they they want things to be better. Like I can just look around like Shenzhen. And it's very very kind of maybe superficial, trivial yeah. uh, idea or, or example. But you can look around Shenzhen and you can see them like tearing up all these bad sidewalks and putting in like sidewalks with the universal ac accessibility exactly. with like bumps on the road for blind yeah, people. Yeah, I've seen that. I've noticed yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like so, you can see like a will to, to make things better. There's a working system. There's a working system actually. So. Yeah, and so like when I when I go back home to America and I see that there's still like, you know, the same pothole from two years ago in the road, I'm like. You know, is there a will to make things better for the people here? There's not really, right? For real, for so. real. Of course, there's still so many things that China can learn from other countries, and China still has a long way to go. China is nowhere near perfect. Yeah. yeah. Just like no country is anywhere near perfect. Yeah. The U.S., Canada, across Europe, across Africa, we are always trying for perfection. So I think if we just keep sharing our own points of view um, in a positive way, mm -hmm. because when you look at the media right now, you will definitely see so much negative media. Yeah. Like, for example, against China, against mm -hmm. Africa, against many countries. I mean, the negativity so gets the attention, right? It gets, it gets the, clicks. the attention. <laughs> Those videos get so much attention. I don't yeah. really understand why. Yeah, I mean, I don't either. People want to people wanna be angry for some reason. I, I don't know. <sighs> It's just the internet, or it's the real life. I don't know because you, you encounter people in real life. You don't you don't find people like that, exactly. right? Exactly. But the internet the inter feeds on the negativity, so it's very strange. It's very strange. But I, I, it's very well said what you said about like just wanting to make things better yeah. for the next generation and even for people here now. You want things to be better for exactly. your friends. You know, my, my friends for the family. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, <laughs> but then. At the end of the day, we still have a lot of good people. Like yeah. I've met good people here in, in in China, and of course. There are so many amazing Americans <laughs> yeah. worldwide and even in America who just want the best for the world and the best for everyone. So I think it's not just for China alone, but across the world. Okay, now, just a random question. Okay. Now, a huge part of your channel has been talking about Neo. Recently, there's been a boom yeah. in the electric car, in the EV sector. So you are someone who's experienced in the EV sector, right? Yeah. You've actually been driving a lot of EVs around China. So where do you see EVs in about five years? in five years um, so I, I'm not an analyst in the industry yeah, right? anything yeah. like that but um, I think that in in five years especially in China you're gonna see the vast majority of cars on the road will be electric uh, I think that's pretty clearly the direction we're going in right now we have a lot of plug-in hybrid extended range EVs exactly. um, that are selling a lot right now it's kind of like a transition uh, but yeah. there's also a lot of uh, battery electric vehicles and I think that in you know, it's already kind of here where it's like every price point in China, like uh, for electric cars, they have. They have ultra cheap electric cars, ultra yeah, expensive electric exactly. cars. Whereas in other parts of the world, like in America, for example, we don't have the really low end EVs. We only have Most kind of expensive. higher end cars. Yeah. Um, but China, it's already here where you can buy anything under the sun electric. Exactly. And so I think in five years, it'll be 70, 80, 90% of all sales will be electric. We're already over 30% here. Yeah. Uh, and, and in cities like Shenzhen and Shanghai, we're already over I, exactly. I, probably like 50 or 60 percent, right? So, <laughs> uh, in the future, yeah, a lot of everything will be electric. Uh, in terms of globally, the market is going to be America and Europe are going to yeah. have American and European electric cars, exactly. And then everywhere else is going to have Chinese electric cars. Yeah, I think the race <laughs> is getting tough. Yeah, it's so, really, really serious. Because like in America and Europe, there's a lot of um, you know like protectionism against Chinese cars yeah. but in like the global south you know like so Southeast Asia uh, Africa and yeah. South America opening up BYD and Geely and all these electric cars from China that are affordable and well made exactly. and they're gonna they're gonna be everywhere so you got to be ready for that my hope is just that more people should be able to get access to these cars yeah, yeah. easily so yeah so yeah finally yeah. as an OG in China okay someone who has understood not just China alone you've traveled to Thailand maybe everywhere Malaysia, everywhere you've traveled yeah. across the globe yeah. and experienced different cultures different people from different walks of life and different ethnicities for someone who's trying to leave their country and travel to another country you as an OG what's your personal advice to that person someone who just wants to go and see the world but they are really scared and they have a close mind they feel like if they go somewhere they might not be able to adapt so what's your own personal advice for them to be able to so uh, yeah that's another good question um, you know I can't speak for everybody but there's a lot of people who are scared there's also a lot of people 
who are very comfortable. Yeah. So those are two things that can probably prevent you from, you know, taking a, a step outside your, you know, to somewhere new. Like get outside your comfort zone and engage with people outside, engage with people in the real world, and you'll find that like there's nothing to be afraid of, right? Like people are not scary. The vast majority of people everywhere are kind and welcoming and friendly. Uh, even in your own home country, like in America, I, I said earlier in, in this video that like uh, probably the most experience I've ever had, the negative with strangers or whatever, are in America. But still, 99% of experiences with people are all friendly, right? And even especially when you go overseas or go to another country, yeah. people can see like people can see that we're foreigners, right? Exactly. They can see that we're not from here, and they're not gonna be angry at us they're not going to be you know try to stop us from like enjoying our life here they're going to be like wow new friend right people exactly. are like hanging out with a friend yeah, welcome everywhere not just china <clears throat> it happens everywhere i go i've been to so many countries yeah and almost every country people are overwhelmingly positive and friendly so whether it's uh, exp uh, advice for people want to come to china or anywhere it's just you know of course you know you got to figure out how to do it legally whatever all that good yeah. stuff but once you figure out the steps for your particular situation your country your education your passport all that stuff then you just make the, the leap and go. Because once you get here, people are gonna be like, oh, that guy looks lost, that guy looks confused. <laughs> yeah. And they're, people are gonna be friendly and they're gonna come and help you out. And that's exactly. just my experience everywhere I've been, so. Of course, and I feel like when you travel, you know, to a new place, maybe a new city or a new country, you actually start to leave. You don't just exist. Yeah, yeah. Because when you are just in the same location for a very long time, you might not really understand so much about what life is all about so when you travel more and i think that's why you that's i think that's why we really bonded so that's fast right. because yeah. you are an amazing person man i appreciate that you are too man man thank you so much well i'm trying i'm trying my best <laughs> i mean i think i think we're both doing our best like you yeah. said we're trying our best but i think that um just from the very moment like we first met <laughs> yeah. like we can tell that we're not people who are going to be exact jerks to each other right yeah, like, of course like, of course and i think you know like we kind of I think touched on it a little bit already is that like people who are outside their comfort zone not just existing but they're living yeah. they're gonna be more welcoming and more exactly. friendly and more more open to meeting new people and That's so like true. probably if I would have seen you in a Cameroon yeah uh, you you I mean you you'd be nice you'd be of friendly course. but like if I didn't know you like I would just think you're so one of many Cameroonians exactly right? like, maybe from what you've heard out of Cameroon about Cameroonians yeah so. I mean so, <laughs> yeah. so but we're both here we're both living living our lives and like experiencing life exactly. instead of just like existing yeah, so, exactly so that's how people like us can come together wow. that's really cool I forgot yeah. what's your plan for the future <laughs> if you don't mind me asking what do you my think might future. be your plan for the future so I've been in China 12 years I'm yeah. an OG uh, right now I'm working on a, a plan to move to Thailand and uh, enjoy retirement Oh, awesome and maybe I'll, maybe in the future my channel will be like a retirement in, in Thailand kind of content I don't yeah. know or maybe I'll just enjoy enjoy no content and just relax on the beach right so nice we'll see we'll I see. hope someday I can be where you're at <laughs> come visit anytime man. once I'm there once I'm there I of course that. man well thank you so much Eric it's been an amazing chat and I'm so grateful guys go check out Eric's channel He's an amazing person. He's got so much amazing content. 12 years in China and making YouTube videos for a very long time. You will be amazed by what you will find on his channel. Well, I really appreciate you saying that, but uh, <laughs> he's hyping me up a little bit no, too much because my channel is very, very chilled out no, and calm. He, and, uh, he's just too humble. Not, that's not how he, that's, his, that's his personality and that's the reason why you're going to love his channel even more. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. And of course, obviously, you're already here. So <laughs> if you haven't subscribed already, I'm sure you can see the stats where it's like 20% of people haven't subscribed or whatever. So subscribe to his channel, please. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Of course, I think hopefully in the near future, we're going to link up again and do yeah, so much sure. more. Maybe if not just in China in another country thank you so much for your time I had an amazing discussion with you and thank you guys so much for watching of course there's so much more to come if you want to see more amazing videos like this and interviews like this feel free to like this video subscribe so more people can see and have open minds go to his channel Eric G YouTube channel subscribe to his channel so you can get great amazing content don't forget this is Willen see you next time <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.